beauties! Welcome back to Coco Cares with Jaira. I'm so grateful that you guys are here. Guys, thank you so much. Um, more people are watching these and like reaching out to me and I'm, I'm so grateful you guys. I love you guys. I couldn't, I couldn't be here without you. Actually, I could. I, I'd be here if nobody else was here. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's nice. You, It's refreshing. Um, and so I'm Jaira guys and a lot, almost a lot. I was going to say almost everything, but a lot of what I talk about is just um, accountability, awareness, uh, knowing what you're stepping into, being sober-minded so that you are, and don't, obviously, <laughs> let's not be on drugs, but when I say, <laughs> when I say sober-minded, I'm not saying like, oh, you can't have a glass of wine or, you know, yo, yo, you could do whatever you want. I'm not your mother. You know, you could do whatever you want. You're a grown adult. Pretty much everyone who's watching this is probably a grown adult. Um, but when I say sober-minded, I mean uh, being clear in thought, you know, allowing your thoughts to line up with the words so that you're doing and acting in a way that you're aware of what's going to happen. You know, you're aware of the repercussions if there's anything. You're aware of the rewards. You're aware of the consequences instead of just, you know, living life and acting however you want to act, doing whatever you want to do, and then when you see the results it's like how did I get here how did this happen you know like stop just stop playing games okay because we're not in a tournament um but I feel as though as I feel sorry sorry all this movement it's like oh, watch out watch out watch out it's like a movie sorry <laughs> You guys, I have a good time. I have a good time by myself. Um, but as we, you know, as we are aware of ourselves and accountable and as we are sober minded, um, then we're going to be able to heal our children. We're going to be able to raise, nurture, rear our children in the right direction and they're our future. So it's important for us to be aware of ourselves. It's important for us to be accountable. It's a, it's important for us to, um, you know, be wrong and be okay with that so that we can get it right. I always say like, be willing to be wrong so that you can be right instead of just being right in your wrongness, thinking that you're right. You're doing no, especially nobody else, but most definitely your yourself, you're doing it a disservice, you know? Um, and so today we're going to read affirmations. We're going on life, marriage, prosperity, um, I really, guys, I encourage you, if you're not already, write affirmations for yourself and um, do, you can even, you know, take tips from what I do, write your affirmations and then pair it with the word. So it's like you're, for me, it means like what I'm, when I am speaking over something in my life and then I pair it with God's word, I'm like now, I believe that the angels are moving on my behalf because they move according to the word of the Lord, you know? So it's like, I'm not just saying what I say because I feel this, you know? Now I'm putting, I feel as though like it's being backed up, backed up with authority, you know? Um, and so I would encourage you guys to write your own affirmations. I would definitely say start in areas that you're not pleased in because, um, you know, what what is that one? I would love that. Um, call things that are not as they are. And that's in, I think that's in Mark, Matthew. I, I, I know it's in the Gospels. Don't call me, okay? Um, but when the Lord says that, it's like, okay, because if you are in Christ and if you believe God planned things out for you and, you know, he has your future down packed and stuff, then what you're looking at isn't what is so. You know, like trouble that's going on, it don't last always. You know, if defeat is going on, it does not last always. If you're, whatever it is that you're looking at, we can go down a list of things. It's not going to last always, you know. And where you, wherever you are operating from, that's what you're going to see. So if you're operating in, oh, nothing's working for me. All of this is bad. I can't get a break. And you're, you're actually saying that too. That's all that you're going to see. Nothing's working out. You can't get a break. You know, that's all your mind is going to register. But if you're um, in the mindset, in the space of like, everything works out for, the, for my good. The world is working in order to serve me. You know, like things are just going to start happening because you're now in line and in tune to like, 
how can a way be made for me instead of seeing all the obstacles and everything that is in front of you preventing you from getting to where you say you want to go, right? So um, start there. Start with areas that yeah, you're not pleased in your life and write your affirmations if you're not already. But here we go. Short and sweet. John 10, 27. My sheep know my voice and I know them and they follow me. Acts, 30, Acts 10, 34, God is no respecter of person. I love that one. I love that one. Y'all, I say that one to myself all the time only because, you know, one of, the, one of the biggest things is not comparing yourself amongst yourself, but that's also one of the hardest things. And anytime I see someone and I'm like, dang, Lord, I would love to have that because I got everything. I got everything that my Jesus has given me, you know. But, you know, if you have a desire and you like present that desire to the Lord, I, I always say like God is no respecter of person. If he'll do it for them, he'll do it for me. Like if he did it for the Egyptians, like if he brought the Israelites out of Egypt and they didn't even know Jesus, right? They didn't even have the Holy Spirit. Oh, bet. Like, I'm good. I'm good, you know? And so, but in the midst of trial, in the midst of going through something, um, when you are, you know, like you're working or when maybe you see somebody else having, having or appearing to have what it seems like you want, I think this is a good scripture to stand on and even remind ourselves because it helps us stay humble. It helps us stay um, in the right motives. It helps us um, not trying to become a circus, you know, not trying to compete. It it helps us remember that like, yo, if the same God who made all of us, the same God who just promoted that person is also the same God that will promote me, you know, that is working for me because God, we're all God's children and he loves us all. So he's not going to favor them over me. And just like he's not going to favor me over someone else. Like none of us are better than anybody else. Like you're not that great. You're not that great. It like without Jesus, you're nothing, you know, and staying in like staying in a mindset of like, OK, I have what I need and my God is giving me what I need. Um, if I desire this and I see that he's given it to somebody else, this my like my God, my father is also going to do that for me if I need it, if I want it. You know, I want to say I want to say. We're not going to, that will probably be a video because we're not going to get into that. Um, Ephesians 5, 25, for husbands, love your wife as God loves the church. He gave up his life for her. You guys, you know what? Revy. So I remember I was watching uh, Miles Monroe one time and he was talking about how he was like, Jesus had a wife, Jesus had a wife, and her name was Ecclesia. And I was like, what? Jesus had a wife? <laughs> you know, because I was like, I thought Jesus was a virgin and all this other stuff. And I was like, Jesus had a wife? And then, you know, like you get into understanding like Jesus' wife was the church. And I was like, I'm the church, you know. I was like, I'm Jesus' wife, you know. And then it's like he tells our husbands to love us the way that Jesus loved us his wife, the way that Jesus loves the church. And if you're a female, you're the church. Well, I mean, not a female. Like, if you're a believer, you're the church. But also, like, if you're a female, you're the church, but you're his wife. Do y'all get that? I'm just like, and imagine, like, if you could only, like, like comprehend how much Jesus loves us. And then, like, if you put that into, like, relation. I said, Lord. <laughs> You treat me good. Like, <laughs> I'm so happy. Um, first Peter 4 and 8. Above all, love each other deeply, for love covers a multitude of sin. Romans uh, 12, 10. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one, al honor one another above yourself. John 2 and 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper and be in good health. Good and be in good health. <laughs> Guys, I <laughs> so you know, like I've written these like a long time ago. You can see like pins fading and all this other stuff, and then like down here at the bottom, it got a little water water damage. Um, so I couldn't read. I couldn't see what that was. I didn't know if it was like health or help, but we got it. Third John. One and two, if you want to go reference it. Peter 16 and 13. Commit 
to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans <clears throat> you know what so um, that's one reason so you guys remember when I showed this to you? my let me show you one again my notebook where I like write my days down before they even happen you know I just write it down the way that I want it to happen right like I could be writing down a day that like I'm in St. Bards right whatever that you know I just write my day, day down but I'm like I feel in my spirit that everything that I write is going to come to pass like every day that I'm writing I'm going to see it um because it's like I feel as though I'm writing these down and and as I'm writing them down they're like my plans that I present to the Lord and I believe that he's going to make these come through because I feel as though these plans are in line with what God has called for me you know because obviously I'm you know in line <laughs> Like, don't get me wrong, like, yo, if you tripping, if you wilding, and you're writing your day down, all you're doing is journaling, okay? <laughs> don't play yourself. Um, First Kings 2 and 3, observe what the Lord your God requires, walk in obedience. Mark 10, 9, therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Matthew 5, 13, you are the light of this world, a city on a hill cannot be put out and then y'all know we're going with the favorite amos 9 13 through 15 indeed god declares it won't be long now things are going to happen so fast your head will swim one thing fast on the hill ever you won't be able to keep up and ever while you look blessings 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 it'll be like wine pouring off of a mountain i will make everything right for you again amen lord thank you um, I love you guys. Have a blessed day. Bye.